Over the years working as a speaking coach, I've worked with many international professionals that move to the US and struggle with their confidence when speaking in public. This is a huge setback when trying to get buy-in, persuade clients, expand your network, land that interview, or even make new friends. According to this study from McGill University, listeners are less likely to believe someone with a foreign accent unless they are perceived to be speaking with confidence. But what does confidence even sound like and how can we achieve this in a setting where you're more likely to be judged? In this video, I'll give you four vocal characteristics to focus on and start implementing for more impactful communication. The goal is to feel more in control of your speech so that you can spend less time worrying about how you're being perceived and spend more time speaking with confidence. Most people who speak English as a foreign language tend to hyper-focus on things like pronunciation and achieving a scholarly level vocabulary, which is great when you're trying to master a language, but there are other factors that have been proven to be more beneficial when it comes to being perceived as more trustworthy and confident as a speaker. The four vocal characteristics that you should be focused on are volume, pitch, speed, and hesitancy. Let's get started with vocal volume. Vocal volume is referring to how loud or soft your voice is when speaking. A strong, louder voice is often perceived as being more confident because it signals to the listener that you're speaking from a place of experience and knowledge. This doesn't mean shouting or talking over others, but it does mean being heard by everyone in the room and using a consistent vocal volume that doesn't get shaky or waver when confronted with difficult questions or topics. Determine your vocal volume by becoming more aware of how you typically sound when you speak. Take note of your vocal volume in your next meeting, pitch, or conversation. You can even record yourself and listen back, but it's really important to try to stay as objective and non-judgmental of yourself as possible when reflecting and evaluating your voice. It all starts with awareness. I've put together a free speaking checklist and rating scale, which you can find in the description to help you become more aware of your speech. I highly recommend sharing this with other professionals, colleagues, even friends and family to collect as much objective feedback as possible. It's completely normal to be nervous when presenting, but monitoring your vocal volume will ensure that you are not only being heard, but respected by your audience. The second characteristic that contributes to confident speech is pitch. In leadership positions, there tends to be a bias towards lower pitched voices, but that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with having or using a high pitched voice. You can still be a leader and build trust with a high-pitched voice, but adding variation to your pitch will ensure that your audience stays engaged. In a study of both German and English speakers, pitch variation increased emotional reactions. Well, what does that mean? It means that capturing an audience's attention isn't as simple as just speaking low or high. It means leaning on pitch for added emphasis. Your tempo or speed is another vocal characteristic that allows you to communicate trust and capture your audience. If you're nervous and rush through your speech, it might be difficult for others to understand you, but if you overdo it and speak too slowly, your listeners might tune out. Just like we discussed earlier with volume, the best place to understand your rate of speech is through self-awareness and assessment. So use that checklist that's in the description. According to the National Center for Voice and Speech, American English speakers tend to land at around 150 words per minute, but your rate of speech might be a little bit higher or lower than that. Let's move on to the final vocal characteristic that you should be focused on, and this is hesitancy. Now, leaning on pauses and delays in your speech doesn't mean that you're inexperienced or nervous, contrary to popular belief. I know a lot of people are really scared of there being any moments of silence in their speech because they think it allows too much room for error, that it might make people bored, that it shows that you don't know what you're talking about, that you need too much time to process, that maybe it's obvious you don't speak English as your first language. And that's just you know a bunch of insecurities, a fear and doubt getting the best of you. Pauses are an incredible way to pace yourself, to allow your audience to process the information that's being 
being said and to add more emphasis and stress to have more impact. A great way to really overcome the fear of using pauses is to look at speakers that do this so naturally and so effectively. And the first person that always comes to mind is former President Barack Obama. Let's take a listen to this short clip so that you can really hear for yourself. It was, I think, a moment in which America, for a brief moment, came face to face with uh, a reality that African Americans in this country, I think, had understood for quite some time. When you're practicing, be intentional with those pauses and use visual prompts to help guide you through your script. This might be highlight marks, underlining, adding notes, page breaks, bolding, anything that will really catch your attention when practicing. If you're having trouble finding the right moment for a pause, ask yourself the following questions. Is there a change in topic where a pause might help me transition? Is there an impactful statement where a pause can give the audience time to reflect on what was said? Am I regularly running out of breath here and need to collect myself? Will I be changing a slide or referencing new material? Can I use that moment to pause? Remember, pausing doesn't mean hesitancy. It is not a sign of weakness. By being more intentional with your pacing and your pausing, you will come across as even more confident than ever. If you made it to the end of this video, you now have the tools you need to become more aware of those key vocal characteristics that have been proven to help you sound like a more confident speaker. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe for more content around building your communication skills. That's it for me today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.